Hey, I'm Jordan Rudis, and I want to share with you some of the greatest things that I know to improve your piano technique. Let's take a look at the mystery of piano arpeggios. And there was a time when I wasn't able to do the arpeggio and I was fascinated by them. I was at uh, the Aspen Music Camp in Colorado and there was one of my other teacher's students who was playing these magnificent arpeggios across the way. She was flying. And I was sitting there going, like trying to, until I had a really, really big breakthrough, partly because my teacher was wonderful and gave me some really good tips. The first thing was that I would be playing, whether it's scales or arpeggios, and my teacher uh, would come over and take my, me by the elbow and kind of bring my arm along a little bit faster than maybe I was totally comfortable with. Playing the piano is very much about the motion. It's very much about you're flowing from this point to this point, and then you're flowing back. If you get hung up with all the little thumb turning under or finger turning over, that's gonna be what stops you. So if you're playing like, you can't be thinking, you know, turn, turn, you have to think motion, motion. So now let's talk about arpeggios because that's why we're here. When you play an arpeggio, let's say you play a C major arpeggio, you're gonna play C, E, G, then you can play it again. And let's just say two octave arpeggio. So what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna think about this big move that you have to go from this third finger all the way to your thumb, you're turning over and then you're gonna hopefully luckily hit your thumb there. The way you wanna think about it is you're gonna move your, your arm in that direction so the thumb under motion is minimized. First thing to practice, going towards your, um, your thumb, the higher octave, and just kind of trying to do it fast without a lot of turning. Imagine somebody kind of pulling you along. So it's more that your arm moves there and therefore minimizing this turn. And then after you get that, you could try going to the next note. And then. And then. And then. So when you're coming back, it's very similar, because let's say you're coming back, and then you have this big jump from C to G. And really, if you play it slow, it's a little bit harder, because you've got to go all the way over, and maybe your elbow comes up. There's a lot of thought that goes into it but it's really not like that. It's more that you are just going in that direction. So it'd be, it'd be, it's almost like, imagine playing this chord and then this chord really fast. So when you practice it going down the other way, practice going like C, G, E, C, and then going to the G, but quickly. We kind of call that a burst. You want to just really, Really go for it and take a look at your elbow and make sure you're not doing that. And there's not this extra motion because, you know, playing any instrument, whether it's piano or guitar or violin, the least amount of motion is the best. So if you're playing, let's look at a scale again. So if you're playing, you've seen players that go like, and everything is a lot of stuff going on. But if you just flow, little bit of motion, got some direction going on. 